by eating things that are predominantly fiber and water and then jam packed with micronutrients, phytonutrients, yeah. polyphenols, bioflavonoids, antioxidants, prebiotics, probiotics. Like that's what's inside the sprout. There's like every single thing in the sprout is is mag magnificent and good for you. Serena, how are you? How are you, my dear friend? I am the best ever. Oh my God, I've been waiting. I couldn't even sleep last night thinking about our live today. Yay! I was so excited. I'm so excited you're here. We are, it's been a while, you know, because we're usually really good about just like checking in. And, and I know that you've been really busy as of I, and it's just so nice to be able to connect with you here. And I'm so excited about what you have to share today. So um, I get, I know everyone's excited. We've had a lot of comments about it. And I know that there's some people that said their Wi-Fi is a little off. No worries. We're going to record all this and make sure it's all copacetic. Oh, Tavia, hi. So I see so many familiar faces. Okay. So Doug, are you there? Are you frozen? I'm, I'm here. Loud and, loud and clear, perfectly perfectly clear, ready to go. All so, right, okay, so let's dive in. You know, I did a little intro, uh, which is a very, very short microscopic intro because there's so much more I can share about you. But if you'd like to introduce yourself to people who are on here who may not have met you yet, uh, who may not have had uh, the chance to watch our other two interviews, which again, I'm reminding you guys, definitely go back and watch those interviews. They're epic. He, Doug is just such a wealth of information. Um, maybe you can introduce um, yeah. everyone. Well, to well, this, is, this is going to be our best live so far. Oh, um, awesome. Okay, okay, Serena. I love it. So, so I grew up in New York City, standard, you know, American household. But then, you know, when I was in my 20s, my aunt got diabetes and they chopped off her feet below her ankles. And it was so mortifying for me to, to experience that. Like I was questioning like, what, what could it be like not to be mobile, mm. right? And then my uncle got heart disease and died. My mother got stomach cancer. My father got heart disease and died. And my brother, who's only two years older than me, became um, obese, diabetic, developed atrial fibrillation and had three strokes and a heart attack. So wow. I thought like I was about 36 pounds heavier and I just thought like, this is just the way we were. We were genetically cursed and like nothing mattered. Like I really was at a point where nothing mattered to me. Right. And then I had my come to cucumber moment where I heard about um, plant-based diet, whole food, mm -hmm. plant-based. And in a two week window in 1999, I went from eating anything to vegetarian, vegan, raw vegan. Mm -hmm. And like, that's how I am today. Probably yeah. 17 years of that 21 years. I wow. Yeah. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. That is, well, I mean, first, thank you for sharing that part of your story. I don't think you've shared that in all our interviews, I think maybe one of them we shared a little bit. So thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, but, it's, thank, thank you. I mean, it's it's something like what what gets me out of bed this in the morning is that like the sprouts have taken over my microbiome, like yeah. the diversity of sprouts, and they, they what they want to do is they want me to spread their seed, right? They yeah. want me to share the message with the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that that's what I'm doing. And so for the last, since I had that awakening, every moment of my life is about how I can share that. And so in New York City, in the early 2000s, you know, we were doing raw salads, raw entrees, mm -hmm. raw desserts, raw juices, smoothies, but it was expensive and it was premium, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, you know, the juxtaposition of that versus seeds like when I did my podcast with Marianne Williamson, mm -hmm. right? And to get her attention, like I, the sprout said, like I asked the sprouts and the sprout said, oh, Marianne is 
concerned with justice, food equality, food justice. So we did a whole podcast about food equality. Yeah. Like the fact is, you know, we could live anywhere in the world and and some people could not have access to fresh, ripe, raw, organic vegetables. Okay. So the, the biggest insight that, that I had when I moved to the desert was that I'm in a food desert, right? Yeah. But my closest restaurant is is McDonald's, Burger King, 7-Eleven. So I don't have Air One, Whole Foods, right. Rainbow Market. I don't have that. So that's where like I had to really like tune in yeah. and say, what can I be able to eat in days, right? Not weeks, months, or years, and I don't want to be in the car. So that's when like sprouts like just came to me and I had always thought of sprouts as a garnish, right? I thought of alfalfa yeah. sprouts and mung bean sprouts, mm-hmm. but here like the sprouts and the universe said, no, Doug, we're vegetables and every benefit of the whole food plant-based diet can be achieved with eating sprouts. When I, when I spoke to Dr. Bill, uh, Dr. Will Bolshevitz on, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, the about gut health doc, yeah. mm-hmm. he uh-huh. basically said, you know, rather than just taking random probiotics, mm-hmm. right? If you want to build, you know, good flora microbiome, have diversity. So when I asked myself the diversity question, I went from alfalfa and mung bean to alfalfa, arugula, azuki, radish, clover, broccoli, chia, flax, five different kinds of lentils, peas, hemp. And there were so many different sprouts that I was growing sprouts, more sprouts than I could eat. Yeah. 30 days. No, go ahead. I was going to say, like, sometimes it's so funny that you say that because I will, you know, I get back from traveling and I'm, I, you know, and obviously I start fresh, right? Because there's nothing, there's nothing in the fridge or there's nothing on the, on the counter. And I'm like, oh, I want some of this and this and this and this. And I'll have my, all my jars lined up and it yields so much that so much. I, I mean, I can't even eat it fast enough. You know, I'm, I'm eating it like every meal and there's still, it's like endless, you know, it just you yields so much when you, when you're making it. Just yeah. a couple of tablespoons. Yeah. This was one cup of lentils and they grew so quickly and so abundantly that I had to split the jars yeah. into two jars. Yeah, I'm always having to split them because it's like, oh, they're still going and it's just like endless. And um, yeah, no, I just, I, for those people who haven't yet sprouted, first of all, you need to get Doug's book, the sprout book. Um, and you need to follow Doug after this. Um, and you should always follow Doug forever because he's a genius. But I would really recommend that you order like a kit online and Doug has all the information, he walks you through it because once you start, like you'll be addicted. You know, you're just gonna be like, this is so easy and it's so nutritious. Well, I sprout I mean, when I traveled. I told you that, right, Doug? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I mean, well, the, the whole thing is, and let, let's just back up for, for, for a second. Mm-hmm. So what are sprouts? So all seeds, there'd be no plant life on the planet without seeds that germinate, AKA sprout, and then grow, and then replicate themselves millions of times over. So it turns out that to grow a normal vegetable, Mm -hmm. the seed has to sprout, it grows into like a microgreen, and then a little vegetable, and then grows and grows, but can take months um, to do it. And for it to have healthy vegetables, normally you need sunlight, you need soil, you need fertilizer, you need lots and lots of water. So when you're in the desert, um, we have a lot of sunlight, we don't have a lot of water, we don't have good soil, we don't have good fertilization. So the, the number one mind blowing thing was that sprouts grow without soil, without sunshine, without fertilizer in days, in just days. Like, you know, these, uh, God, these, let's see, these like garbanzo beans that I'm I'm sprouting here Mm -hmm. and I do small batches, these are two days old and they're ready to eat. Like, so, and, and so now let's talk about if we can segue into food as medicine. 
Yes, right? let's do it. I, let's do it. And I love that there are some people on here that sprout when they travel too. You're my people. Right. Wow. So, so Hippocrates, right, the father of of ancient wisdom and medicine, mm -hmm. said, "Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food." Mm -hmm. Right. So when you're when you're thinking about food as medicine. Every single person on this live who, who watches this can look at something and ask that food. Like they can hold it in their hand, they could stare at, they could smell at, and says, is this medicine? Mm -hmm. Is this food as medicine? Or is this junk? Right? Yeah. Right? Is this junk? So when you look at food as medicine, right, and that's the standard that you have for consumption, not food as entertainment, right? right? Not food as pleasure, right? Yeah. But food as medicine. Because if you think about that, every single part, every cell in your body, like the fluid in your eyes, the, the, the microscopic hair in your nose, those hard pearly teeth, right? Every, every organ, Right, the blood, the lymphatic system, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the skin, the nails, the heart, everything is constructed mm -hmm. by what you eat. Yeah. yeah. So so if you I think agree. about that, everything, like mm -hmm. everything, it's it's that intelligence mm -hmm. coupled with water, coupled with air, you're mm -hmm. constantly creating this this these microbiological transformations in the body. Mm -hmm. So uh, I love how you, I love how you said that Doug, because you know what, uh, people, we, we don't, we forget, you know, and we forget, um, just really how important it is to food, what the, how we are made up literally of what we eat. And people say it all the time, but I love how you just like broke it down, you know, just like the fluid in your eyes, your teeth, everything that comes everything, what you put right. in your body. Like, I mean, it's a truism, like every yeah. kid. You know, you grab any kid anywhere in America that's seven years old and goes, you are what? You are what you eat. Yeah. Right? You yeah. are what you eat. Yeah. Right? And do you want to, like, you know, we don't have to talk about other things. Mm -hmm. But we now know, right, that cooked carbohydrates create the carcinogen acrylamide, period. So when you heat things, heat up, carbohydrates, mm -hmm. um, the higher you heat them, the more oil, the more things, the more dangerous and carcinogenic they become. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we can go on and on about what not to eat. We're going to talk about what to eat. Yes. Right. Yes. And Let's focus on that. So the, the amazing thing about sprouts is that anyone can grow them for mm -hmm. pennies a serving using the simplest equipment, jars, trays, bags, unbleached paper towels, like the, the seeds want to sprout, they want to grow, they yeah. want, you know, they want to be replicated. And it's interesting how like coffee beans, mm -hmm. right, were at one part, like a thousand years ago, in one part of the world. But mm -hmm. the intelligence of the coffee beans, right, created within them, the psychoactive drug caffeine mm -hmm. and they got people addicted to the caffeine mm -hmm. and now coffee's grown all over the world mm -hmm. right so that's what we we needed they, they said without coffee there would be no industrial revolution because mm -hmm. they needed to make people have that coffee break mm -hmm. which isn't like oh take a break and relax it's go get coffee so you can have the psychoactive stimulant mm -hmm. so you can do more work right mm -hmm. how are you gonna get people to work through the night you give them coffee to keep them bright and alert so what's happening now with the sprouts and why the sprouting phenomenon is happening mm -hmm. is because people need to have energy naturally not energy that's altering your central nervous system but right. energy that's that's coming natural right. so the the thing about sprouts is that they are higher nutrition and lower calorie mm -hmm. so you can afford to eat more right and they're filled with 
soluble and insoluble fiber. Mm -hmm. So they feed the microbiome and they, they cleanse, like the fiber sweeps the colon. Mm -hmm. So by eating things that are predominantly fiber and water and then jam packed with micronutrients, phytonutrients, yeah. polyphenols, bioflavonoids, antioxidants, prebiotics, probiotics, like that's what's inside the sprout. There's like every single thing in the sprout is, is mag magnificent and good for you. And if you think about like what's in the sprout, like every seed is like the history of the universe inside because the seed contains with it the future plant yeah. is all there so, right? so, true. so so it's almost like there's a famous painting and everyone can google it and you can type it in the comments from Rene Magritte called clairvoyance mm. and and he's looking at an egg but he's painting a big bird ah love that right so when yeah. i look at a seed like I'm seeing a forest, yeah, I'm seeing an yeah. edible forest, because yeah. that's the future um, intention. So the first thing when I look about food as medicine, mm -hmm. there were more than four thousand peer-reviewed published papers mm. on broccoli sprouts alone. Yes, because broccoli sprouts are part of the cruciferous vegetable family. And the cruciferous vegetables are known to be very healthy, very healing, and mm -hmm. having anti-cancer properties. Yes. Well, it turns out the broccoli sprouts have the highest concentration of the precursor to the compound sulforaphane. Yes. So, so if you were to kind of go in and just lightly start to Google broccoli sprouts and cancer, you're going to find the research done by Dr. Jed Fahey and others that just exploded for treating cancer, not curing, but treating cancer mm -hmm. with broccoli sprouts. There's another level where you can look at Alzheimer's and the brain, right? That there's things in sprouts, in broccoli sprouts, that help with dementia and yes. Alzheimer's. Yes. We have instances of um, autism mm -hmm. in young men and, and women that they end up suffering their entire life. Turns out that broccoli sprouts create heat shock proteins mm -hmm. in the brain that reduce the symptoms of autism. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah. so if you're eating things and you're thinking about that, if we think about weight loss, weight gain, right? Some people want to gain weight, right? Because they want muscles and muscle mass. One cup of, say, garbanzo beans, mm -hmm. 35 grams of protein, and 380 calories. So you're getting calories. So yeah. you can get your calories in sprouts. You can get your proteins in sprouts. Mm -hmm. You can get your antioxidants in sprouts. You right? can get everything via you sprouts. Can, yeah. You can get everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then like the, the thing I did um, last week with um, Robbie Barbaro um, from Mastering Diabetes. Mm -hmm. And we 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 were on their live. They're mm -hmm. they're they're terrific. Him and Cyrus, yeah. they're like brothers. Ah, um, that's awesome. Um they believe uh -huh. that A, sprouts are a green light food for type 1, type 1.5, type 2 gestational mm -hmm. diabetes. Sprouts yeah. are good. Yeah. But actually, they said that sprouts are the best food if you have diabetes. Like the best food to regulate insulin levels, to give you fiber, yeah. um, low sugar, low fat, high nutrients. Like, so there's this level that, um, that that's happening right now where people are discovering the, the magic and the benefits of sprouts. Like they're just, we're scratching the surface. Yeah. And, and this is the surface. And, it's and, only the surface. And you, and, it, and you are leading the charge, Doug. So 
you know, so grateful for all, you know, just so grateful for everything that you're doing to bring awareness to Sprouts um, and just all the benefits of it. I mean, for myself included, and I've learned so much just, to, and I already knew a lot, but just learned so much more just with our chats and our talks. And there's been a lot of questions that have come in um, before our live today. I just from having us post, uh, just sharing that, just posting about the live. And then actually some questions that were from uh, the other two interviews that we did, the other two lives that I'd like to address because it's already come up here a little bit as well. And it's just, some people do have a hard time digesting, you know, yeah. and, and that's been sent a lot. You know, I, I tried this well, I, I, I wanted, I want to do better. I, I, I see all the benefits, but my stomach hurts. I have a hard time right. digesting it. Or what about what some other doctors said about lectins and seeds and, you know, so, and so I would love for you as an expert here to really kind of dive into that and address people's concerns about it so that they can, you know, just so that we can mitigate that. Sure. Okay. So sprouts are a general term, right? Mm -hmm. So you can sprout a lot of different things. You can sprout quinoa, you can sprout beans, legumes, or you can sprout like broccoli, radish, you know, clover. Mm -hmm. So a good place to start is on salad greens, right? So mm -hmm. the broccoli, the radish, the clover, um, those things um, are easier to digest than the legumes, mm -hmm. right? Because beans in general are a combination of a protein and a starch. Yeah. So you're, you're naturally getting those you know, the, the flatulation can occur if it's foreign to your to your system. Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest is start small, right? But if you would take like uh, broccoli, alfalfa, radish, depending on whether you like spice or not, and start to eat a few ounces of those a day mm -hmm. and make sure like when, when I look at like the sprouts, let's see. Um, so when I like look at these, like before I eat them, these are just alfalfa, right? right? And that's what's left on like day three. I'm eating them before they even fully mature. Yeah. Before I, I eat them, I like will hold them and stare at them. Mm -hmm. And my eyes are tuning into them like Pavlov's dog with the mm -hmm. bell. So I'm tuning into them and then my mouth starts to water mm -hmm. and my digestive fluids mm -hmm. are beginning to i'm salivating mm -hmm. and then for those who are new to this experiment with eyes mouth the way to get to salivation is to chew them mm -hmm. so as you chew you'll form this this saliva and if you chew like I know, like I'm 55 years old, right? I mean, it's hard to believe because I feel like I'm still 15. Like I'm in this playful level. You have but, the energy of a teenager, yes. Well, that's how that's how I feel. It's the sprouts controlling me. But but what what I used to inhale for the first like probably 50 up until I was eating sprouts, I inhaled my food. Like if I if I would only bite it chew it to the level that I could swallow it without yeah. choking. Yeah. Right? Like that's like, yeah. you know, let's be real. Like I inhaled my food because I was in this level of poverty consciousness, not knowing when my next meal was coming from. So I always lived with scarcity around food. But now that like, I'm buying my sprouts in 35 pound buckets like these yeah. five gallon buckets filled with sprouts like i i'm now over it like i know that no one's taking away like i'm always going to have food yes yes the, the second thing is when you add salt oil or fat you will have a tendency to overeat the foods mm -hmm. if you're eating them raw and you're staring at them, you're chewing them, you're digesting them, and you're calm. You're not going to get the acid reflux. 
You're not going to get the high degrees of flatulation. You're not going to get the upset stomach. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the people are upset stomach. It's, it's, it's in the head also, right? So if you're having the, the beans and this conversation will apply to the lectins as well. Mm-hmm. So in order for that seed to stay in a dormant state, there are um, enzyme inhibitors on uh, in this in the coating and the the shell of the seed, mm-hmm. right? Also, phytic acid and yes. the lectins. Yes. So, when you pressure cook mm-hmm. the le- the 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 legumes, you're kind of exploding and eliminating the phytic acid and the lectins, so you're able to get the good benefit of that. Mm-hmm. I would say the percentage of people around the world who don't know what a lectin is, don't know how to spell lectin, yeah. and aren't affected by lectins in any way, shape, or form is the majority. Yeah. It's the majority. So so when, when you sprout you're, and you rinse, you're literally rinsing off the enzyme inhibitors you're rinsing off the phytic acid and the sprout itself is going through a metabolic kind of conversion. Like, you know, this is a lentil sprout, Mm -hmm. right? So if you see there was the lentil, right? But now there's the root coming out. This Mm -hmm. is the root and this is the shoot. And if you look carefully, there's the leaves growing on it. Yeah. Like the lectin is turning into a vegetable. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and thank you so much for that really thorough explanation, Doug. I mean, for, for those of you who either tuned in, thank you so much for joining us. For those of you who have been listening, um, for those of you who are concerned, you know, that phytic acid about the lectins, just soak, you know, I mean, that is a part, that's step one when you're sprouting. You just want to make sure you soak whether or not you're having grains like quinoa, we soak everything. And you can actually purchase some things that have already been quote sprouted. Um, and I know I'm kind of deterred from having just raw sprouts right now, but I know that not everyone is on a raw sprouts diet, but we would love for you to start incorporating raw sprouts to your diet. Uh, so what you can do is you can just soak everything and that's part of the process. And that really helps release um, those fighting acids and it helps you digest. So I just wanted to give that as a reminder to everyone. Wow, there's a lot of comments coming in. Um, for, yes, Baxter Parker, for, for when you soak, every seed is a little different, right, Doug? Some require soaking six to eight hours, some is 12 hours, some 10 hours, some even less, some maybe four hours. But I would say on average about eight, right? Yeah, f- five to eight hours or overnight. Yeah. Like- it's an easy thing. And look, I think the, the important thing is I eat a lot of sprouts, right? Yeah. Um, if people aren't eating sprouts, the interesting thing is to know that the U.S. They, they used to have, and you're a chef, nutritionist, they used to have like the food triangle, the food pyramid in the U.S. They, get, they got rid of it because there wasn't enough room in the pyramid for the 13 servings of fruits and vegetables yeah. they were recommending every day. So that metaphor, you know, reduced down like the other things like the meat and the dairy to minuscule. Yeah. So so the fact is like one thing that I could recommend is, and everyone, you know, I, I'm sure everyone who's watching you is very present and aware about meditation and mindfulness. When you look at what you eat, you can ask yourself the question, is this worthy of my consumption? Like, is this the highest quality nutrients on a per calorie basis? Like, Mm -hmm. is this worthy? And then know in your conscious and subconscious mind that everything you put in your mouth Mm -hmm. is in fact a life or death decision. Like you eat poison, you will die right? You eat um, junk food, you will die, but it will be prolonged. So it's the idea of delaying the gratification for the things that are being bombarded into your brain today 
to consume. And I think that if you become more of the observer, more of like the meditator consciousness of consumption and you're calm and saying, no one's taking my food away. Like, you know, it's calm. I mean, we still, and I say this, like I'm not concerned with, with starvation anymore, but we have 10,000 people on this planet dying every day of starvation, like 10,000 people. Yeah. We are like, just, you know, when you feel that there's like 1500 to 2000 COVID deaths every day, there's five times as many starvation deaths, right? And if we think about most food agriculture that's being grown is being used not to feed these 10,000 dying, starving humans, it's being used to feed animals mm -hmm. as opposed to feeding humans. So we, we have a solution for global hunger today, right? It's called whole food plant-based yes. with some sprouts. So, yes. and, and, I, and I think, and I love that as a reminder because we all have the ability and the capacity to contribute towards that solution. So I think that so often we're looking at like, you know, the government or um, a, a, another an institution to kind of implement that. But just for you guys listening, for the thousand of you who have been on here, and there's a few more questions, Doug, that I've seen up that I definitely want you to address. Um, just adding this to your diet, if it's not a part of your diet yet, and I don't want anyone to panic if it hasn't been, and I don't want anyone to panic if, you know, you had some celebrations over the weekend or occasionally you have your, your cheat meal or so to speak, just really make a mind, just be intentional and, and make a, just be mindful about adding it to your diet and then, and then adding more of it and more of it. And then I think that we and myself included really, you know, lead by example. So see how this can affect your family and your circle of friends and your community. Once they see that you're reaping the benefits of just adding a few ounces a day and then a few more ounces a day and then a few more ounces a day and then your diet will evolve and some people can be, you know, right away and can switch over. But if you can't, at least start to add it because a whole food plant-based diet is incredibly nourishing for your soul, for your system and healing. Um, and so I just wanted to just say that to everyone because you are all, you all have the ability to make that change. And you all have the ability to help distribute um, that kind of prosperity in food to other people. So, so, so I just want to say that thank you, Doug, for just kind of letting me interject with that. Oh yeah. Um, and there's a lot of questions about bacteria and parasites when when you're growing it uh, and having the, the sprouts raw, and um, whether or not it's safe for pregnant. Or so I wanted to let you, you know, answer those questions because a, a few of them did circle through. Time. Yeah, no, th these are doozies and, and yeah. I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. So, so um, the, the, the quality of sprouting seed has gotten much better, you know, over the years, mm -hmm. right? So that's one thing. We now know that you can wash the seeds with anything from grapefruit seed extract hydrogen peroxide, parasitic acid. I just bought this like cool little toy. I mean, I shouldn't even call it a toy. This is low strength, high strength. This makes hypochloric acid. Ah, okay, so, is that Santa true? Which, um, I, this is a generic brand. It was like a uh, hundred okay. bucks. I don't even know that the brand, but okay. <laughs> this, you can add some salt Mm -hmm. and water, mm -hmm. and it basically makes a non-causic like sanitization agent like yeah. bleach. Yeah, it's amazing. I have one right? of those too, yeah. So, so if you take those and you wash and rinse the seeds in there, this sanitizing agent will go into the seed crevices and remove any potential bacteria on the outside of the seed mm -hmm. and wherever it comes from. So you can do a lot of different things. You can do with like 3% or 6% hydrogen peroxide. It's one of the reasons I wrote the book is because there was so much different information that I was my own like lab experiment, 
Yeah. Right? And so yeah. I tried a lot of different things. I can say I've been sprouting for over 25 years. I've never like had any instances at all. And I think that the, the, um, the, the instances of foodborne illness mm -hmm. from sprouts, you know, is very, very rare, mm -hmm. but because there's no one who represents sprouts and it's newsworthy, mm -hmm. like all of a sudden, like there's one instance when people are forgetting how many cases of foodborne illness associated every single day with meat, chicken, fish, dairy, eggs, etc. that, you know, I was reading in Dr. Michael Greger's book, you know, where he was saying that if you cook kitchen, if you cook chicken in the kitchen, mm -hmm. it's probably safer for you to eat out of the toilet than out of your kitchen sink, mm -hmm. because there's no degree of, of sanitation that it can have on the chicken that reduces the salmonella from it. So, but in the cases of foodborne illness with sprouts, homegrown sprouts, like I've never heard of one. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. never heard of one. The mm -hmm. cases happened in like fast food restaurants mm -hmm. where they, they have low sanitation, they're cross-contaminating it with animal products mm -hmm. and the like. So I think if you want to be cautious, mm -hmm. which like everyone has that choice, yeah. you can wash and rinse your seeds mm -hmm. through every stage and you can remove the bacteria, you can remove, you know, the exterior pathogens. So I think that, you know, my, my feeling is sprouts are very safe. They are as safe as eating any vegetable. Mm -hmm. And if you think about freshness, mm -hmm. right, and supply chain, mm -hmm. produce, by the time it gets to the supermarket, can be a week or or two weeks old by the time a consumer buys it off the shelf in the supermarket. Yeah. And with sprouts, you're taking the seed, you're controlling every level of the environment, and you're able to harvest it while it is fresh. Yeah. Right? So Yeah, and that's the best part of it, right? Like just exactly what you said. You know, you have you have total control of it. So if you make sure that the vessels that you're using to sprout your seeds are clean. You know, they've been cleaned, they're sanitized. You make an effort to uh, rinse those seeds in clean, sanitary water. And as Doug said, you can use something um, that's got, uh, you know, like maybe 3% hydrogen peroxide. Or you can go at an extra step to really make sure that everything is clean in the vessel and also in the seeds. Then you really should be fine. But it's no different than any type of environment. You know, you want to keep an environment where you're growing something clean, you know, bacteria free. And so that's usually where issues come from is if, uh, you know, maybe your vessel or your environment may have other pathogens, you know, coming in, but the seeds themselves are really, really safe. And it's, you have total control of it, as Doug was saying, you know, because the entire chain from start to finish is in your environment, you know, it's in your own kitchen or wherever it is that you're spotting in. So you have the ability to control uh, the sanitation levels for that. So yeah. just, and, as a and, reminder to everyone, so no, don't have fear about it, you know, like give it a shot and, and you get to control it. Yeah, and look, to answer the question about should pregnant women eat sprouts, mm -hmm. um, you and I know, and I'm not going to mention names, you know, a gastroenterologist, um, who um, his wife ate sprouts every day during the pregnancy, right? And for the last four years, they feed the baby sprouts. Mm -hmm. So I look at sprouts as the most nutritious food on the planet. They're available, they're inexpensive. You can control yeah. them and you can take different levels. So I think it's cool. I think, you know, if there is mold on the sprouts, I would compost them. Like yeah. if, you, if you get to the level of mold, and, and look, mold can come from two things. There could be mold contaminated on the seed. So by washing and sanitizing with some sort of sterilization agent on the seed, you can reduce that risk. Um, the second thing is if you, um, there could be mold spores in the air. So if yeah. you're not properly, like you and I right now, we're breathing in mold spores. Yeah. But we're breathing them in, we're breathing them out, they're not sticking. 
If you let your seeds, you know, sit in a wet, moist environment and you are not showing the love to them twice a day, then mold could be forming in this hot, wet environment. Mm -hmm. And the mold can then grow really quickly, can grow faster than sprouts. So if you see that, you know, don't be upset. Throw, put them in the compost. Yeah. Wash and sterilize everything. Start again. Yeah. And then, like, you also want to make sure you're keeping the environment and your house temperature. Like, if you're 90 degrees, you know, inside, you're at a much higher risk of getting mold than at 68 to 72 degrees. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of variables there. Yeah, absolutely. And and I love that you just reminded everyone, like, look, if it molds, compost it and start over. It's okay. You know, like it, it's just sometimes, sometimes it happens. But do it again and don't be disappointed about that. It doesn't necessarily mean that your environment is in a great environment for sprouting. It just means that maybe this time something molded and then just try it again. And by the way, I wanted to remind everyone that the fur babies, can also oh have so sprouts. Cute. So cute. Yes. So, you know, they love sprouts too. Um, and it's great for them as well. And so sometimes we'll sprinkle some sprouted seeds, like some broccoli seeds into their food. Um, they like that more than when they're fully, fully sprouted. But, um, but yeah, so I know that we're coming up to almost the top of the hour. I want to make sure that we at least get like three solid takeaways, you know, from you for today uh, sure. as not just sprouts as medicine, but just for, let's just try and address some like newbies too. So like, what's like three solid yeah. takeaways? Okay. So three solid takeaways is that think about incorporating something fresh, raw plants mm-hmm. into every meal. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's number one. If you're going to do that, Eat the sprouts or eat the raw vegetables first while you are hungry. Yeah. Because I don't know very many people that want to eat raw sprouts for dessert. Right? <laughs> so, right? Yeah. so you just want to eat them, them first. Mm-hmm. And the second thing is slow down. Yeah. Like chew your food, breathe your food, put your device down. Like so many people are like, in their phone, even when they're with someone else. Yeah. And while they're eating, that they're shoveling the food in and they're missing the opportunity to properly nourish themselves. Yeah. So so slow down Mm -hmm. and chew your food. Mm -hmm. Like chew your food. Like I I would, you know, maybe Serena, you could do this as, as since you're so technologically savvy. Maybe you could do a chew app. You know where ah. where where oh, you, you yeah, take a bite, yeah. take a bite, and press the, the app, and then the clock, and you chew, and then you write down how many chews you had per minute, and then you can go on to the next part. Because if people just okay. chewed better, mm-hmm. like they sleep better. Oh, another thing I would say is like control your feeding window. Mm, yes. Right. Without Very like important. fancy terms like fasting, but feeding window, like s- s- stop eating earlier. Mm-hmm. So when you go to sleep, your stomach is not in like major digestive mode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, those are such, and they're such, they're such important takeaways, but they're also so simple. You know, it doesn't doesn't cost you anything to take a moment of presence, you know, and be present with your food and and really kind of hone in on on the miracle of life that's in front of you that now feeds your body. And it goes so much further than that just one bite, right? That becomes your health. That's the makeup of our physical body. So I think that that's really important. That slowdown is so such an important reminder. And just, again, it's really, it's a simple thing that you can start adding to your diet, adding to your lifestyle and uh, informing and educating and supporting your friends and doing the same, you know, just, just adding like a bunch. And you know what, like you'll, you'll get addicted. It is addicting. Like once, if you haven't started sprouting yet, once you start adding sprouts to your meals, it is just something like I actually kind of crave it. I crave the flavor. I crave the 
crunch. It's um, it's something that's actually going to be a fun addition, especially if you have kids and you have a family. You know, kids love being a part of that process and growing the plants and then seeing it. And it might not be from farming table, but it's at least from counter to table. Um, and it's a, just it's another great um, kind of like connecting energetic thing that you can do. Right. Well, look, I, I think that the work that you're doing, Serena, is so beautiful and so powerful. And you're helping so many people and you know, the, the speakers that you come on, like, I, I like, those are people that like every single one has so much to offer and you're creating this channel and you're so professional, you're so diligent in it. And I'm grateful that you let me, you know, get up here and, and talk a little bit about Sprouts because um, it's, we're, we're at the beginning and we have to really take care of ourselves and the planet and, Sprouts are a little way to make that little contribution. Well, thank you so much, Doug. Thank you for your kind words. You know, I just absolutely adore you. And I have to come out to the desert and visit you guys. And Yeah, please, and you bring to, those fur balls. I have to also honor my team. You know, it really, I don't do this by myself. I have a beautiful team of, you know, amazing energies. My sister, Elena, um, Emily, who's my EA, Meg, Mila. We've got Tresha. We've just got some really beautiful souls that, um, believe in what we're doing. They, they make this all possible as well. And Doug, you're one of the people, you know, you're one of the people. You said I have amazing people on here, which I am so blessed to have incredible people come on, but you're absolutely one of them. And I'm so grateful that you've taken the time to come on a third time. Look, Doug is one of my favorite guests. Let's see. I didn't know I could sprout my own food until I saw him on your live. Like if you're just you're affecting so many people also. So thank you so much for your work. And thank you for coming on here. And, um, you know, we'll do something again soon. We'll just like go topic to topic. This one was a great one, um, especially in the time period that we're in right now, but giving people tools where they can really feed their bodies and their souls with medicine that they can create in their own home is um, a, a profoundly powerful tool. So, so thank you for that. And Much thank you guys. Thank all of you. You know, Luis, I, I did see your note earlier about some people who are like different comments that are coming in. Thank you so much um, for pointing that out. And I love all of you. Thank you so much for your support and coming on here and staying active and engaged and asking questions. I'm so grateful for you guys. And um, I will see you guys really soon. So don't forget, replays are on YouTube and Facebook. And then we'll post it here later. But you guys are the best. So I can't wait to see you guys soon. All right. Thank you, Dad. All right, thank bye you. Bye-bye. See you guys soon.